We're glad you are here. Thank you for taking time out of your beautiful, absolutely God-given, wonderful, amazing weather up north, Fourth of July weekend, to come and worship and celebrate with us today. Well, prior to last week, last week we took a a break for some baptisms, and it was a whole lot of fun here last week. Uh, Prior to that, we've been talking about some things that help us to give, and give is an acronym. Um, Knowing that when we are generous, the G in give, we will be healthier and we'll be happier, and, and that can move us to give. And we are often inspired to give by those who we have seen live generous lives. And when we have a a vision, the V part of give, a vision of how our giving can change us and change others and actually uh, bring about God's kingdom through that work, it motivates us to give and give at times incredibly sacrificially. Uh, this church has done tremendous things over the years and giving to missions and giving to support all sorts of things, whether it was when the sanctuary was built or the community center or all kinds of other things. Uh, this church has a, a great legacy of giving tremendously, and, and that's a beautiful thing. And we saw last week that Jesus had this absolutely amazing ability uh, to do all of this in people's lives. We, we, we saw this two weeks ago that, that through Zacchaeus, remember Zacchaeus was a wee little man, right? A wee little man was he, we talked about him two weeks ago. Uh, we heard how Jesus, through G- Zacchaeus, was able to transform his life in amazing and radical ways. Jesus goes to his house Zacchaeus repents of his lifestyle, and Zacchaeus in that turns and and agrees to give away half of all of his possessions and pay back anyone who he had cheated at any point, pay them back four times the amount that he had cheated them of because Jesus helped him to, to see a vision of who he could be and how life could be and how God wanted him to live his life. And so Jesus inspired people He inspired and he helped them to see a vision of God's kingdom and the potential for their lives, which moves them then, and moves us hopefully then, to give generously. But there's one more thing that Jesus was able to do uh, which motivated people to give. Now that thing is, he showed them that their giving was effective. That's the E today. We're finally to the end of our Give series here. Effective. When people gave... It it made a difference in their lives, right? It made a difference in their lives. It made a difference in the lives of others. And it made a difference in the lives of the community in which they lived. And when we know that the things that we are giving, our time, our treasure, our talents, when we know as we are going to give them that they will be effective, we feel better about giving. And then in turn, because we feel better about giving, knowing they'll be effectively used, we're more willing to give. So, for example... And I'm going to go off on a tangent here. I'm just warning you. For example, this is why many of us, many of you, have chosen to give various things to our VBS program that I was just mentioning a minute ago, right? We have chosen to give because we know it's effective. Because you know it will have a kingdom impact. You know that if you come and serve for just a few hours that last week of July, the 25th through the 29th, you know that if you are here for just a few short hours that week, you can make an eternal difference in somebody's life. Right? You can be effective. You know if you come in and decorate. You know if you ride on the parade float. Sounds silly, but maybe you riding on the parade float is going to make a connection with somebody you know and they're going to sign their kid up to be in VBS and their kid is going to hear about Jesus and it's going to change that kid, it's going to change that family, and it's going to change their eternity and you didn't even know you did it. But you know by giving, by serving, by loving, your time, your treasure, your talents, whether it's making props downstairs, whether it's riding on the float, whether it's donating some spray foam, some self-expanding foam, whether it's coming in with treats, whether it's making Kool-Aid, whether it's running around with kids outside for that week, whatever it is, you know that you can make a difference. And if you can't do that, no, you can make a difference by praying. Pray. We have people praying every day for this upcoming Vacation Bible School. Every day. Why? Because we know prayer is effective. We know prayer matters. We know prayer makes a difference. The good book, the Word of God, tells us that prayer is powerful. So if you can't do anything else, pray. Pray 
Pray for those who are working. Pray for the kids who are coming. Pray that we would make much of Jesus, that it would be effective, and that we would have a huge kingdom impact because we're going to share the gospel that week. Pray that, pray that it's fun. We want all who come to think church is fun. Church doesn't have to be boring. Church doesn't have to be stuffy. Church doesn't have to be old people yelling at young people because they don't like their music or they don't like them running in church. Church should be awesome and fun. This is God's kingdom. God is good. And we thank him and we praise him. And that is what we're here for. And when you see as you give that it is effective, it makes a difference. You will see that it is worth inviting your friends and family to be part of our VBS, that it's worth inviting them back after they were here for that to be part of this church, right? Because it's effective. We're going to show families. We're going to show children. We're going to show our community that we care about kids and we care about them. We care about them in the present and in the eternal. So we're going to give. We're going to give radically. We don't ask people for money to come and be part of this. Anybody can come. So give. Don't give because you might get a tax break. Big deal, right? I've never, ever given for a tax break. Now, maybe that's because I'm not in the right like tax bracket as a pastor where I can like sway my taxes. That's possible. I understand that. But we're not giving for tax breaks, right? We're not giving because we're going to get our name on some plaque. We're not giving because we're going to get our, our name on... You ever been to like one of those things where they list out all the donors, right? Which is okay. I'm not criticizing that. I used to raise funds for a living for the Boy Scouts of America. That, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not what motivates us to give, or it shouldn't be what motivates us to give. We're, we're not giving because we get a cup or a tote bag like they give out on PBS, right? That, that's not going to motivate us to give. We give because we can make a kingdom impact. That's why we give. That's why we volunteer. That's why we serve. That's, that's why Elaine and that's why Yvonne are here at all hours of the week. I'm serious. You can't imagine how many hours these two ladies have put into our VBS program. Thank you, ladies. It's, a, it's tremendous. I'm, some weeks I think they're here more than I am. Well, that's because I'm out visiting and doing other stuff. But still, they're here a lot the past couple of weeks. So if you see them, thank them. Because what they're doing matters. And what you're doing to support them matters. We are making a difference. And I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. VBS is going to be awesome. I want you here. I want your kids here. I want your neighbors here. I want friends, family. I want your enemies here. Bring them in, okay? Because it makes a difference. Because we will be effective in using what you give. So thank you for being giving because it matters. Thank you for giving of your time, your treasure, your talents. Keep it up. Keep giving. Keep providing. Knowing that what you're doing is effective and makes a difference. As I said, I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but it's actually part of the sermon today. Let me talk about some other places where giving matters. Now, I can't cover everyone. I can't cover everything. So I apologize today if I don't include you in my list of things because there's a lot of stuff that goes on that I can't even name today. But there, no, I am thankful of everyone, all of you who are here today, just giving of your time you're giving today. Thank you. Now, last week, well, in the last week and a half, I saw some amazing service in our church. And I'm going to point out three people who don't like to be pointed out, but I'm going to point them out anyhow. Um, Raleigh, an artist, artist and, and Kenny Westbig in particular, the three of them spent the better part of a week at Chuck and Judy Pearson's house. Now, we had some storms come through, if you haven't been up here, and it blew down a bunch of trees, and it blocked the driveway where Chuck and Judy live, Right? And, and Chuck, in his younger years, probably would have gotten out there on his own. But Chuck has pancreatic cancer. And in his last week, has really taken a hit with his chemotherapy. It, it's been a rough 10 days. And praise the Lord, Chuck is here. Amen. Amen. He's, he's a living testimony to God's work in our lives. But here we had three people just go and love and serve bring their tractors over, bring their saws over, bring their sawmills over, bring their shovels over, 
and cut and work in the hot sun. And yes, they're related, but still. That is service. That is love. That is what the church is to be. And what I saw when I stopped over and visited was beautiful. So thank you everyone who served there, who loved there. It was a beautiful thing. You had a huge effect on Chuck and Judy's lives. And I know they've said thank you, but let me say it again. Kenny and Artis and Raleigh, thank you. That was beautiful. Yes, absolutely. We can clap. Absolutely. Um, Beulah, I know you were over there too at times. Thank you. It's wonderful. Another thing, again, I'm going to keep pointing them out and making them uncomfortable. Raleigh and Artis made sure we had an awesome baptism last weekend. I mentioned this last week. I showed up at church last week. Raleigh was carrying a five-gallon bucket full of hot water, filling the cold water in the pool so that I'd be a little more comfortable. He wasn't even getting in. <laughs> well, maybe he did. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, they could have been in there, and I wasn't here all day. But Carrie and Aaron and myself, thank you for filling the pool, for putting it up, for putting the warm water in, for making sure it was there, for taking it down, for drying it out. So we could have an awesome baptism. So we could celebrate what we should celebrate as a Baptist church. Because your efforts and giving matter, it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you to Ruth and Mark and Sandy who serve without recognition in the sound booth almost every week of the year. They're back there so you can hear my voice. You, they make me sound good. They make me look good. Well, as good as I can look anyhow. I mean, you've got to work with what you got. But they're back there recording the sermon so we can put the video online. I looked at the, the videos and I looked at the stats this week. And in the past uh, little under a month, there were 600 different individuals from all across the world who visited our website to watch a sermon video. Okay. This building can't hold 600 people, folks. Our impact is spreading in the world. Glory be to God. And, and Mark makes sure the sound is good on it. Ruth is making sure the video is good. Sandy's making sure we've got stuff projected up here and we can sing and all that kind of stuff. And they do so without recognition. They didn't ask me to point them out this week. But they deserve to be thanked because they're giving their efforts, their time, their treasure, their talents is making a difference. I love that. They serve without recognition every week. And what they do makes a difference. Another place. If you were here a little bit early today, there was coffee in our lobby, wasn't there? There were some cookies. Thank you to Lila, who shows up early every week. She's oftentimes the very first person in the building. Sonny and Lila come out. Make sure the coffee's on, make sure everything's ready, make sure the, sm the smell of coffee's permeating the air out there so when you open that door, it, it smells like a good place to be, right? And they do that every week. Now we've had some others step in and do that too, and I thank all of you for that because it makes a difference. And Lila in particular though, she's probably made enough coffee here to fill an Olympic pool, right? And it matters. Knowing that when you're going to show up that you can get some coffee that's probably going to help you stay awake during my sermon matters. <laughs> right? Making coffee might not be hard, but it takes sacrifice. It takes dedication. She, she plans out going to the store and making sure we have coffee, making sure she picks up some cookies and those kinds of things. It doesn't happen by accident, folks. And she doesn't do it, so... She gets the recognition, but it matters. It makes a difference. So thank you, Lila, for your service. Another place I want to point out, and this is one of the most important things that goes on in a church, to make us be an effective church now, today, and in the future, one of the most important things that we can do is have a nursery that's well-staffed. Thank you to everyone almost brings me to tears because you make a difference. You don't know when you're serving in the nursery what's going on in here, but by serving in that nursery, you're making a difference to the lifeblood of our church. You're ensuring that when a young family comes and they entrust you with their most prized thing on this earth, this small child, 
They're saying, I trust you enough, here you go. For a little bit, I'm going to go and worship my Lord. And you're enabling them to be in here and worship without distraction. Not that kids are a distraction, but sometimes they can pull our attention away. My wife talks about this all the time. My wife was a single mom on Sunday mornings, right? And if you're a single mom, blessing to you for the amazing work you do. My wife only has to do it for a couple hours a week. And she complains that it's difficult. Because I'm here, I can't help. Any Sunday morning, I'm, I'm of no help to my family. So when my wife could come or when when our young families can come and they can walk in the door and they know they can go to a nursery that's clean, that doesn't smell bad, that has safe toys, that has people that will smile, that has people who will take care of their kids, that is amazing. That ensures that we as a church can continue to grow into the future. That is a tremendous ministry. You're connecting with kids. You are the first contact point with some of the kids. And if you give them a good experience, they're going to want to come back to church. They're going to want to be part of Sunday school someday. They're going to want to be part of our Wednesday evening programming, our high school youth groups. Their mom and dads are going to want to come back. Serving in the nursery is one of the most important things that we can do as a church. And I'm not over-exaggerating that in any way. If we want to grow, if we want to have a future, the nursery is vital. We could use some more people who serve there. Thank you to those who serve. You're doing a tremendous job. We'd like to diversify and add some more people to that roster. If you'd like to be one who could make that kingdom impact, Sandy Westvig is the person to talk to. You can talk to me and I'll put you in contact. We would love to have some more people in there on rotation making a difference. Your serving is so effective there. So I invite you to join. Lots of, lots of great things that we do here. That serving shows love to a family and it shows love to a church. When you serve in the nursery, you let a little bit of light shine into the souls of those little kids. So as I said, if you can give even just one week, every eight weeks, we'll take it. Because what we do in there is so important. I have two more things and we'll get to the meat and potatoes of the rest of the sermon. But this is the sermon too. I mean, I'm preaching. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the word of God. Serving, loving, giving, sharing. That is what the message is today. I'm just pointing out some local specifics before we get to the scripture. So couple others real quick another important place of service how many of you were greeted when you came in today was there somebody standing there Russell does a great job thank you Russell Russell thank you I love you brother our greeters show up they stand there and they smile and many of you serve in this way and thank you for it. And, and we could use some more to serve there too. When you greet, when you stand there, you are the first contact point of a church. And if you know anything about first impressions, if we screw that first contact up, doesn't hardly matter what else we do. I could preach the greatest message in the history of preaching, which I assure you I won't, but I could. And it still wouldn't matter. If they had a bad experience at our front door, they won't hear what it is I'm spewing. Their heart will be closed. Blinders have come down. So being there, saying hello, saying good morning, having a smile. Maybe somebody's had a bad morning. Maybe somebody's coming in. The kids, oh, the kids today. I mean, it's a good thing there's not a video camera in my kitchen. Right? When you walk through that doors and there's a smiling face. It's kind of like hitting the reset button. When there's somebody familiar there shaking your hand, or maybe you're a guest and you're visiting, and there's somebody there who, who knows where to point you to go to the nursery or, or can tell you where the bathroom is or can walk you over and introduce you to me, the pastor, or somebody else, that makes a difference. Serving as a greeter is incredibly important. First impressions matter. 
So thank you for everyone who serves and makes a difference in that regard. Now the very last one I'm going to point out, and then I'll actually read some of God's good word. The last one I want to point out, but is incredibly, incredibly important again for the future of our church, is our student ministries. We're doing some planning right now. And, and, and first, I want to stop and just say a big thank you to Yvonne and, Elan and I can't speak, Yvonne and Elaine. I'm combining your names again. They stepped up last year in a tremendous way to give some leadership to the kids' club programming on Wednesday night. And on a Wednesday night, we were running anywhere from 20 to 40, depending on the week, kids in this church building who every week would get to hear the Word of God. Otherwise, they may not have. Many of them that week. A lot of them don't go to our church. That's an incredible outreach. Now, it wasn't just those two ladies. There were many else, many others who served. I mean, Tanya was up here every week helping the kids sing and make a happy, joyful noise in worship. Singing kid-appropriate fun songs, jumping and dancing. You want to have some fun? You want to burn some calories? You can go to exercise at Snap Fitness. Otherwise, come out here on Wednesday night and dance with the kids. Go play ball with the kids. Guys like Mike Lane helping watch and supervise kids from time to time, making a difference just by playing dodgeball with kids in the gym. You don't, you don't have to be like Nolan Ryan with the fireball, you know, fastball to knock kids down. You just got to stand there, right? It doesn't, governing dodgeball or whatever we're playing doesn't take a whole lot of special skill, but it matters, if kids have fun, they're more likely to tell their friends, hey, I had fun at this place last night. You should come with me next week. It's out in the country, but it's a place worth going to. It's called Glory Baptist. Kids Club, it's fun, right? And we had a whole bunch of people who served that last year. I couldn't even name all of them. Thank you. Thank you for investing. And thank you for praying and thank you for giving of your time to treasure your talents. And not only that, I'm here to encourage you and challenge you to do it again. And some of you to do it again in a bigger way. The lifeblood of our church is a nursery and that kid's programming. That will ensure, if we do those things well, that we have a future. Because statistically, if we don't do those things well, uh, we're going to just slowly dwindle. That's the math. That's what happens. We're all getting older. All of us. Every one of us. And so if we don't invest now proactively, because we get to be proactive. That's a good place to be. We get to choose to do this. And I'm inviting you, some of you, and a couple of you particularly, I'm going to be asking in the not-too-distant future to step up in a big way to give leadership to our student programming, for our kids' programming on Wednesday evenings. Start praying now about how you can give, about who you can invite, about what difference you can make, because I know it's having a kingdom impact. We preach the word. We've been giving kids Bibles. We have fun. We feed them. That's important too. We've been giving them snacks and treats. All of that contributes to creating a warm, welcoming environment where students' hearts can be open to the life and eternity transforming power of Jesus Christ. So if you're hearing my voice today, begin praying for that. We need your prayers. Begin thinking about how you might give and serve in that this fall. Because we need to step up and do something amazing. Last year was tremendous, and I want to build on that and make this coming year even better. So we give when we know it can be effective. And I want to leverage your time, your treasure, your collective talents, your finances to make a difference in this world. I'm preaching today, aren't I? Welcome to Glory Baptist Church. Happy Fourth of July weekend, right? Amen. Okay, I didn't forget that I promised that we'd get to the Word of God specifically. We're going to dig into the good book today. We're going to be in John 6, 5 through 14. If you want to follow along, I'm going to read that in a minute. But, but hear me on this. This all fits the big idea today that people want to give and are willing to be generous if we know 
that our giving is making a difference. And the reason Jesus was able to call people to give so much of their lives and and call them to God and and to bring forth his kingdom through their work was, was because they could see when they gave it to Jesus, it had an effect. Jesus was effective in using what they gave. Giving to Jesus made a difference. So look at John 6, 5 through 14. Let me read that here. You'll see it up on the screen as well. It says, lifting his eyes, lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was gathered and coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that all these people might eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii, I mean, we're talking a lot of money, 200 denarii of bread would not be enough for each of them even to get just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Hey, Jesus, there's there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Verse 10 says, Jesus said to them, Have the people sit down. And there was much grass in this place, so the men sat down, and there was about 5,000 in their number. So we're talking 5,000 men. We're not talking just women and children, too. At least 5,000 men. That's a lot of people. They all sit down. Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, kind of like we will in a little bit here for communion, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up all the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. And so they they gathered them up and they filled 12 baskets full of fragments from five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this indeed is the prophet who has come into the world. When we give and we see what it does, that last line there is what it's about. The people saw that giving and how Jesus used it miraculously. Jesus was able to take this small gift. Many of us, when we give, we might feel like what we're giving is a small gift, right? That, that, that may be the economics of your life. Maybe you can only give a couple hours. Maybe you can only give a couple dollars. Maybe you don't feel like you're particularly gifted in a way that the church can use. I guarantee you are. God has gifted you. But maybe that's how you feel. But when you see, when you give that little gift and God multiplies it in abundant and amazing ways, when people give to Jesus and see the difference that it makes, the difference it makes in our lives, the difference it makes in eternity... Think of that little boy when he, he shows up and he says, I've got five loaves and a couple of fishes, right? And there's like thousands upon thousands of people, 5,000 men and then the women and children. Can you imagine when that little boy just gives this little bit and sees everybody get fed by Jesus? How did that impact his understanding of what a difference his giving could make? Tremendous. He felt his gift was inadequate. It fed tens of thousands with leftovers. Just. We don't know how God's going to use our giving. But we do know God will use it effectively. When we see our gifts change people's lives, it moves us to give joyfully and generously. Jesus also shows us that our gifts to others can make a difference. We know this story, but I'm going to tell you it anyhow. One day there were some men, they had a buddy, right? And they were, they were, they were obviously good pals. Maybe they were old hunting buddies, fishing buddies. But the Bible tells us one of them was paralyzed. So, Jesus is in town, Right? Jesus is over at somebody's house. He's preaching. And they've heard about this Jesus and what he can do. And they're good pals, right? And they do what good pals do. They take care of their brother. So they go over to his house. 
They load them up into a basket. They bring them over to where Jesus is preaching, right? They get there. It's a crowd. They can't hardly even see the door. They're not getting in. It's packed, right? Now, some people, meh, we'll go home. We'll try to catch him next time, right? Or, eh, I don't want to see him anyhow, right? Not these guys. What do these guys do? They climb up on the roof, right? They drag their paralyzed friend up on the roof. Which I'm sure wasn't a small undertaking. And then they start digging a hole in somebody else's roof. You show up at my house digging a hole in my roof, and we're going to have words. <laughs> Even if Jesus is there. Right? These guys know that they can make a difference if they can get their friend to Jesus. So they dig a hole in the roof. They lower their buddy down to Jesus with the hopes, no promise, with the hopes that Jesus will do something amazing. They stepped out in faith and served and gave lovingly. And in that moment, those men knew as Jesus healed their paralyzed friend that their giving was effective. It made a real and lasting difference on the life of their friend and on all those who saw it happen. So when people give money or possessions to Jesus, he used those gifts effectively. And he changed situations and he changed lives. And when people gave their time to Jesus or when people gave to people in need, those gifts made a difference. People not only gave those sorts of things, but people also gave their lives to Jesus because they knew that by following Jesus, they knew that by living for Jesus, they would be more effective living with him than they would be without him. They dropped their nets, walked away from their jobs. They left friends and family behind to follow Jesus. They they gave up their incredibly lucrative careers as tax collectors. They were making like crazy money. And instead said, no, the money isn't the important thing. Jesus is. And I'm giving it all to follow him. Giving to Jesus made a difference in their lives. And so they kept on giving. But it's not just giving to the person of Jesus that is effective. It's also giving to God, indeed, through the church that can be incredibly effective. We've been studying Acts on our Wednesday afternoon Bible studies, and we studied this a couple weeks ago in Acts 2. You're welcome to follow along, Acts 2, uh, 42 through 47, and I'll read that for you. Acts 2, 42. Through 47 says this. And they, the followers of Jesus, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and their belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes together, they received their food with glad and with generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all of the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. So worship, mission, and outreach, and fellowship were all supported by the gifts of the people. And the people gave to their church because they knew what they were doing was making a difference. They knew that what they gave was effective. Look at verse 47. The Lord added to their number every day those who were being saved. People continue to give, not because they were ordered to. We don't find any command here that they had to give. They gave selfishly and generously because they knew that their gifts were being effectively used and leveraged for the kingdom. And my hope, my prayer is that people still see giving to the church as an effective way to change people's lives, to change our community, to change our world. 
There's a lot of great things in this world to give to, right? There is. I've given to the Boy Scouts. I've given to the United Way. I've given to the, Sal- to the Red Cross and the Salvation Army. And I've, I've given to the Girl Scouts. And I've given to all kinds of stuff. Those are all good things. There's nothing wrong with giving to many good organizations. I've given to my college. I've given to all kinds of places. I'm sure you have done likewise. But there's nothing quite like the church. And giving to the church is effective because, like Jesus, what we seek to do in the church is to change people's hearts and lives. What we're called to do here locally is different than all the other organizations of the world. Think about it. Jesus did provide food to the crowds. The food was important. But he also taught the people that it was important to trust God for what they needed. And while Jesus did heal people physically, he also taught people the importance of living in ways to bring healing and to bring hope into our lives and into the lives of others. Jesus taught us to forgive, and he taught us to seek forgiveness, which can heal in ways that doctors and medicine cannot come close to touching. Jesus often called us to change our actions, because what he really wanted was a change of our hearts. And that is something that we as a church can do that few other organizations and institutions can do. While the government, they can feed people, they can't tell people about the God who provides all the food for everyone. The schools, they can educate people. My wife's a school teacher. Schools are good things. I'm pro school. Right? I'm pro education but they can't tell children about the God who loves them so much and the God who has a purpose for their lives, the God who desires for them to prosper if they will put their hope and trust in him. And, and healthcare, I love healthcare. We've got a very nice hospital system here. Healthcare might bring us doctors and wonderful hospitals and all that, but the Affordable Care Act doesn't bring hope, Right? It doesn't bring healing like Jesus can bring. And what a church has to offer is a relationship with God that can make real and lasting eternal differences in people's lives. And that is what Jesus offered. And that is what the body of Christ today can still offer that's unique in this world. I believe to the very core of my being that the local church is the hope of the world. And I hope you do too. The local church is the hope of the world. My salvation is not who we're voting for. My salvation is not some program. My salvation is not in a school, in a hospital, or any of those things in this world. My salvation is in the Lord and the Lord alone. And my hope is in Him. So giving to the church matters because it makes a difference in a way giving elsewhere cannot. We're trying to come alongside people and love them and help them have their hearts shaped and changed. We're looking to impact the next generation so that not just next week, not just next month, or not just next year, but for the next 10 years, for the next 100 years, people come to Glory Baptist Church as a testimony to the goodness of God. That's what we're trying to do. Jesus shows us we have an opportunity to make a difference. This past week, I heard about a difference that was made just from our service last week. A number of people came up to me and said how they were touched by Carrie and Aaron, just sharing their faith journey a little bit and how that was an inspiration to them and how it challenged them to examine their own faith journey. You never know what little thing you're giving, what difference it might make. And that's the power and the importance of the church. We're seeking to do what governments and government agencies cannot do. Establish faith and trust in God that shapes values, that shapes morals, that can improve people's lives and improve the entirety of the world around us. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for the potential that is here. 
I'm glad each and every one of you are here. Even if you're here for just a weekend, your giving makes a difference. I've mentioned this before. We already took the offering. I'm not asking you to give more this week. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. It's about being generous and living a life of generosity. It's about choosing to invest in others. It's about choosing to make a difference. It's about choosing to love as you were first loved by Jesus. So thank you, everyone. Each and every person here, anybody who hears me on the internet, watching the video, thank you for loving, giving, and serving, and choosing to follow Jesus. Because it matters. And we here locally, I promise, will do our very best to take whatever you can give and use it effectively. In just a moment, we're going to wrap with communion. And there is one more opportunity for you to give today. Well, at least while you're here. Each week, or each week, not each week, each month when we have communion, our deacons stand at the back doors. They'll have bags there. You can choose to give or not give. This is not a high-pressure pitch. But what they take that money for is our benevolence. And we take that money and we give it away. Every penny. To love other people. People in need. People who just need me to pick me up or, or maybe just people we want to bless. And those men, the deacons come together and they pray over that. They're serious about it. They, they are very good stewards with that money. So if you feel compelled to give today, give there. Because it will make a difference. They, they will find people to bless and love and serve. But this week, as you go, after you've left this place, the, the lights are dark. There's no sound here. You can still go as an ambassador of Christ wherever you go. You can still go giving in amazing ways as ambassadors of Christ wherever you might be making a difference in this world. So we thank you for everything that you give. Amen. Let's pray. I would invite our deacons forward and deaconesses as we prepare here for communion. Let's pray.